Hello and welcome to another episode of the First Home Show, the podcast designed to guide you through the exciting journey of buying your first home. I'm your host, I'm Melissa Barless, I'm the owner and founder of Convey, and today we are diving into the topic that is essential for all first home buyers. When is the right time to make an offer on a property? So timing your price offer correctly can make a world of difference in your real estate journey. So let's get started. So when's the right time to make an offer? It's a question that's on every home buyer's mind. However, you need to take into account a few considerations when placing an offer. So here's a breakdown of the key considerations because timing is very important. Um, so the first consideration is property research. So just ensure that before making an offer, you've thoroughly researched the property that you're interested in. So ask, have you had a, uh, a professional home inspection done? Have you been to an open for inspection with your building inspector to check the structural integrity of the property? Because when you do that, and you, if you find there's like something really defective, that can be the difference between whether you actually make an offer in the first place or if you walk away. So doing that is a really important step. Um, you know, ask yourself, do you know the property's history and how it compares to others in the neighbourhood? So let's say the vendor is asking for $750,000 for a house. Two years ago, you see on realestate.com.au that it was sold for $550,000. And the year before it, it was sold for 500,000. So you can see the property history data tells us that the property is only going up by $50,000 a year and no more. And that can give you an indication of whether the vendor may be asking for too much, too much at 750,000 and that your best and final offer may need to come down a little bit so that it's realistic. Um, recent, sorry, re research recent sales of similar properties in your chosen area just to get a sense of their fair market value. Is the vendor asking for way more than what similar properties are being advertised at or sold for in the last six months? Real estate agent and online tools like going to um, realestate.com.au, domain or other sort of property websites can assist you with this. So don't hesitate to connect with a few real estate agents and actually get their view because they're going to be really helpful in actually working the answer out for that. And there's also lots of Facebook groups out there for first home buyers, just like you, where you can connect with agents and other property experts who can actually give you their view and opinion before you make your offer. So it just goes to show, you know, knowledge is power in real estate. Granted, there may be a few factors that affect the, the property value from location to character, uh, size, floor plan, and the list goes on. But data never lies. And it's a great starting point that will put you in good stead to know exactly how much you need to be offering. The next consideration before making an offer is consulting a lawyer. So get the contract reviewed by someone like myself, a property lawyer and my team before you make an offer. Many agents will ask you to submit your price offer by writing it up in the contract and signing the contract. Writing it up in, in, in the contract is fine um, because it means that you're serious about what you're buying. It actually gives the agent something tangible that they can go back to the vendor with when they, there's a contract presented with your offer from, you know, whatever the price is to the deposit amount to any conditional due dates that you want. But don't sign the document unless you've had a property or lawyer like myself or an experienced licensed conveyancer carefully review the contract before you submit the signed offer. So mark up the contract any way you want to, just don't sign it until the contract is reviewed because you don't want to run in the risk of buying a property before you've done all your due diligence or else it, it, if you sign, it might actually be too late to back out if you discover a red flag after buying. And remember in Victoria, you actually buy the property as it lies subject to everything that's wrong with it. So check out my first episode of the podcast, which talks about the importance of contract reviews in more detail. It's worth a listen. So yeah, get the contract reviewed before um, providing a signed offer. The next consideration before making an offer is finance preparations. So getting your finance in order before you make an offer is really important. I can't stress it enough. Speak to your mortgage broker or get a, to get a, a, a pre-approval of your loan. 
and feel free to reach out to me and I can introduce you to great mortgage brokers that might be suitable to you. Getting your loan pre-approved not only sets your budget, but it also shows a seller that you're actually a serious buyer. You're showing you can afford what you're offering. You're showing them that you're ready to purchase and it's actually going to encourage the agent and the seller to negotiate with you as well. The next consideration is the seller's motivation. Before making an offer, try to understand the seller's motivation. Are they in a hurry to sell? Have you have they already received other offers? Knowing the seller's situation can actually help you make the right move. If they're in a rush to get rid of the property due to a breakdown of relationship or it being a deceased estate, for example, you might be in a better bargaining position to purchase the property at a more reasonable price. And let's not forget, the price you offer can dictate whether you actually have enough equity in the property, enough of a marginal interest in value in the future to set yourself up for the next property purchase if wealth creation is your goal. If you pay too much now and you don't pay a reasonable price, you may need to wait longer to access equity in your home to help you fund the next purchase. You can speak to your mortgage broker about that concept of having enough equity, but keep that in the forefront of your mind because if the margin between what you've paid and how much the property goes up in value is small, it's not going to be enough to, to access so that you can use that equity to fund your next purchase. Keep that in mind. It's incredibly important. And speak to your mortgage broker about that and I can introduce you to a broker that can help you um, with that question as well. But for that reason, in my view, it's actually better not to time your offer based on interest rates dropping or whether it's a buyer's market. The later you leave your purchase, the more properties will appreciate in value and you might actually miss the boat to buy a property of your dreams at a more competitive price and have the equity on hand a few years later to purchase your next property. So don't let interest rates be the guiding reason for why you're going to access the market. So if you look at it kind of like in your mind as a pie or as a, um, a chart, interest rates will go up and down. So picture a line going up and down, but property prices generally, they just go up and up and up. So it's a straight arrow up, right? So don't let interest rates be the reason you're accessing the market because it might be too late to get the property you want at a competitive price. And if, the pro and if, the pro if you're paying more later on, uh, because you waited to access the market, then the equity margin might not be there to set you up for the next purchase. So there you have it, folks. Timing the offer uh, right is essential in your first home buying journey, in any home buying journey, really. And remember, it's a process and it's okay to take your time to make informed decisions. So if you do the due diligence that I've suggested in this podcast episode, it will definitely put you in good stead to make your offer at the right time at the right price. And that is all for today's episode of the First Home Show. If you have any questions or you need any further guidance on your first home purchase, please feel free to reach out to us through our website www.conveyed.com.au. Thank you for tuning in and we'll catch you in the next episode of the First Home Show.